Okay, I'm just going to do a quick video here. Uh, this is kind of a review of um, the Hengelong, um gearboxes that they put out. The new sealed, all metal, all steel, super whatever, super duper fancy gearboxes that they put out now that are aluminum housing. All steel gears, all ball bearings inside. Um, so this is a Tamiya tank. Uh, it originally had the Tamiya gearboxes in it. But uh, I busted one of the output shafts, believe it or not, because it, it ended up being because of the uh, usual, don't nudge that, the usual idler pulley issue that the Tamiya tanks have in the back. Like, it goes cro it goes crooked really easy. So, um, it had gone crooked, and I hadn't really known about that problem with Tamiya tanks, and then the tracks kind of locked up, and yeah, broke the output shaft, believe it or not, because... Uh, yeah, anyways, so uh, I had to get new gearboxes. I also corrected the, uh, I don't know what the cat's doing there. I also corrected that idler issue in the back. So uh, it's they're straight now and they don't bind up. Um, that was a lot of messing around. But anyway, I managed to install those hinge long gearboxes in this Tamiya tank. Now, right off the bat, I'm going to tell you, they don't fit. Like, <laughs> there was some pretty significant um modifications that had to be made to this tank to get those gearboxes in there uh including shaving the front uh glacial plate or not glacial plate whatever that plate is there in the front there where the extra tracks mount um because the gearbox is pushed against that so that, that had to be shaved paper thin um the your little head the um torsion bar uh, longitudinal mounts, whatever you want to call those, were too tall to fit the gearboxes. They had to be ground down with the Dremel, like the whole length of the gearbox to make sure that it would fit level with the open holes that are here. And then, of course, absolutely none of the mounting holes mount up whatsoever. So then you have to pre-drill your own holes by eyeballing the holes that they give you in the gear. Anyway, it's a nightmare. It was a nightmare. But uh, after like a month of just having it as a side project, I finally got them in and they're mounted in there properly. I even managed to add a small aluminum cross brace between the two gearboxes. That was a part of a WL, WPL uh, truck. It was like a cross brace for the back or something that I didn't end up using. And it fit perfectly between the two gearboxes as like an aluminum cross strut. So that worked out really well. Um... But yeah, stuffing them in there was a nightmare. I was like almost regretting buying those gearboxes at the first. I was like, oh, these aren't even close to going in there. But uh, no, I got them in. Anyway, I'll show you how it all works. I'll just turn the tank on and turn my remote on first here. Uh, my tank, I have the switch. I'm uh, hooked up with the machine gun. So everything else is stock to me in this. Uh, where's your little head fuzzer? Come on. Um... To me, a DMD control unit and everything is stock. Um, but no, I'll show you. The, the gearboxes are nice, though. Like, they work well. If you look, I can get some real nice crawling into this. Another thing I noticed is they're really, really quiet. Like, they make very little noise. Like, so if I honk on it here. You see they have a lot of... Quite quiet, though. Like, you can hear a little whine out of them, but it's not that rackety gear noise that you used to get out of... Uh, not only the older Tamiya gearboxes, but, like, any of the Henslong gearboxes also. It's quite nice, uh, quite nice crawling that you can get with this. Um, here, move my Let me show you really quick. That's going to be hard to do because i got to take the top off now. I'll show you how I got them jammed in there. Uh, how am I going to do this? Like this, I guess. My tank hops. The top comes off of my tank. So, oh, Kind of holding the phone at the same time as pulling it off here. All right, so that's how mine comes apart. <coughs> Milo, don't nudge that. 
it looks weird, I know, inside, because my tank has, this is a CO2 tank, my tank has a real gun on it, there's your uh, hose goes up to the gun, there's where you fill your BBs right there, so it, it shoots real BBs with the CO2 canister regulator and all the doings, firing solenoids all inside of that liquid looking, it's that sound deadening that's on there, because my speakers run free air, meaning that uh, there's no box for the speaker itself. It uses the internal enclosure of the tank to um, act as its enclosure. And it gives you a deeper, richer sound. You don't get that boxy plastic tank noise that I can clearly identify with almost everyone else's RC tank. It, it sounds like it's coming right from a plastic box, which it is. So usually if you run things free air and then sound deaden the areas that rattle in the tank, um, you'll get a deeper, richer tone because you, you like I'm into speakers, obviously I have t speakers everywhere in here. Um, so building speakers is kind of my thing. So I knew that that would sound a lot better. Anyways, back to the gearboxes. Um, there they are shoved in. I used uh, 18650s for my power supply, if you're wondering. Um, you can see them there. So you can see them shoved in there. Um, like I said, that was not something that I would want to ever have to do again. But now that they're in, I have to say they are they are nice gearboxes. They're quiet. They have the right like speeds. You know what I mean? They're not jerky. Lots of torque. Um, I like the fact that they're quiet too because the other ones that I don't like when you can hear the gears over the engine sound. It just sounds fake. But uh, anyway, yeah, so that's uh, that's how that went, and it worked out pretty good. I just thought I would, uh, anybody that's planning on buying those gearboxes, oh, like, like, oh, I have a Tamiya tank, and I'll, I'll put these in there as a replacement for the Tamiyas, which I know the Tamiya gearboxes have their own issues, like that stupid idler gear that's in there that's half-supported with a half-bushing, like, that's garbage. I replaced that in mine right away with two bearings. Um, so that never gave me a problem, but like I said, I ended up busting something else on them, so they're not awesome. But, uh, these steel geared ones, there's not a lot you're going to break on that, aside from maybe the output shaft again. I don't know what that's made out of, hopefully something decent, but, uh, alright, I'm just rambling now, so have a good one, bye.